Hello, welcome to all who are watching this broadcast. This live story coming to you from live stories worldwide. If you need prayer, need help, then please contact us on our hotline plus four four seven nine four three double five zero two eight seven. Or go to our website, lifestoriesworldwide.com. There you'll find lots of things which will help you and you'll learn about more about the speakers who've been on our broadcasts on Life Stories. Tonight, our guest is from Scotland. He is Stephen Turnbull. Stephen wants to see people succeed in life. That's his desire. And he works in psychology and he's going to share more about that this evening. So I'm going to hand over to Stephen to share his story with you. But welcome especially to the people in Ukraine. We want to tell you we love you and we're praying for you. Over to you, Stephen. Thank you. Thank you, Alan, for that uh, introduction and uh, the invitation to speak on life stories worldwide. Uh, so let me tell you my life story. Uh, I was born in Scotland uh, in a little town just outside the city of Edinburgh, born into a working class family. And I had a good childhood uh, with two older brothers and uh, parents who really loved me. Uh, a very good childhood, happy childhood. Um, we weren't really poor, but we were not wealthy by any manner or means at all. And my, my parents, they, they took me to church. I grew up in the church and sometimes I liked going to church. Sometimes I didn't like going to church and found it a little bit boring. But I did like the stories. I liked the stories about Jesus. I thought they were great stories. I thought Jesus was a great character. But as I grew up and I hit those teenage years, I kind of thought, I think these are maybe just stories. I'm, I'm not sure that this is true. It's a good idea, the idea of God and that Jesus lived and was this wonderful character. But maybe it is just a story. So as I hit those teenage years and I got to about 15 years old, you start to ask the questions about life. Where do I fit in in life? How am I going to get the best out of life? How am I going to live a life that's worthwhile? How am I going to live a life that's going to mean something? And at that time, when I was asking these questions, uh, something pretty significant happened in our family life. My grandmother was involved in a car accident and uh, she had some terrible injuries. She had uh, head injuries and many broken bones and uh, she was in a coma for a week. And the uh, specialists had done all their tests and they told our family that my grandmother uh, wouldn't be able to function uh, like a normal human being anymore. The brain damage was so severe that she would never be able to walk or talk. And they suggested that, um, they, we, that uh, she didn't receive any treatment for um, uh, pneumonia was setting into her lungs. And they suggested that she just sleep away. But my grandfather was a man of faith. And he told the whole family that he was going to have the, the leader of his church to come and pray for my grandmother's healing. And I remember speaking to my grandfather saying, what's the point of that? This doctor who's spoken to us, who's a world expert, has told us that it's impossible. But my grandfather says, I, I believe in the Bible. I believe in the God of the Bible, Stephen. And there's a passage in the New Testament that says that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And my grandfather said to me that Jesus healed people 2,000 years ago, and he still heals people today. I was very challenged by that, and I went home, and I, I prayed honestly to God for the first time. And I, I challenged God. I had no right to challenge God, but I, I challenged them and said, God, if you're real, if you are the God of the Bible that I read about, then it's no problem to you at all to heal my grandmother. My goodness, you, you raised people from the dead. You could heal my grandmother, no problem, if you are real, if you are the God of the Bible. And I need to know, if you're real, I'll follow you for the rest of my life. 
if you don't hear my grandmother, then you are just a story and I'm talking to no one right now. So the next day, my grandfather brought the leader of his church into this small room that my grandmother was in, this little old man who was the leader of the church. And he had a little bottle of oil with him and he put some oil on his finger and made the sign of the cross on my grandmother's head and said a very simple prayer and just asked, Jesus, will you bring healing to this body? And as he said that, there was a power came into the room in the hospital. There was a presence. You could feel it, the, the, the hairs on your neck standing up. This powerful presence and my grandmother opened her eyes and sat up in bed and started talking. She recovered. We spoke to the doctors and asked, how is this possible? You said this was impossible. And the doctor said to her family that the age of miracles is not over. And this was a miracle. There was no medical explanation as to why this had happened. And I was so challenged by this. I was so challenged that I prayed this prayer to this invisible God. And God turned up in a hospital room in Scotland and healed my grandmother. And so I got down on my knees in my bedroom, in my house, and I said, God, I, I give my life to you. I'm sorry for all the things that I've done wrong in life, for all the selfish decisions I've made, but I give everything to you. I give my life to you. I want to live life with you. I want to get to know you. Thank you for healing my grandmother. So I was 15 years old when that happened. That was a long time ago. That was 33 years ago. And what an incredible journey it's been getting to know God since then. Uh, there is more to this world than meets the eye. If you're watching this and you haven't experienced God yet, I am one of the most sceptical people <laughs> there is. And I was very sceptical uh, in hearing the stories about Jesus. And I wanted to know if they were true. What is the truth? We see so many things in our media these days where we're being misled. But there is truth. And the Bible tells us that truth is a person. The truth is Jesus. Uh, the Bible says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's what Jesus said. So let me give me some examples of how I know this is true. That this just wasn't one or a one-off co coincidence. A few years later, I, I started to, to work uh, and study at the same time, uh, actually in, in construction, in the building industry. And as I was working and studying at the same time, I wasn't earning very much money. Uh, I bought a car, an old car. A not very good car. You know what it's like when you get your first car for many people. And uh, I had a lot of garage bills. Lots of things were going wrong with this car. And I actually got to the point that I couldn't afford to pay the bills on, on this car. I was earning so little money. And so I was at a Christian event. And uh, there was a speaker there from uh, a church in, in South Korea, actually from the biggest church in the world. And uh, he challenged everyone there to trust God with their finances. I found that very challenging because my finances were in a terrible state. <laughs> I was struggling financially. Um, and yet I made a decision. Am I going to trust God or not? That was a question I asked myself. And so, um, like I say, there's more to this world than meets the eye. The Bible tells us that um, we shouldn't... Uh, walk by sight but by faith so I decided to take a step of faith I had 20 pounds in my pocket at that that meeting uh, which was all I had to get me to the end of the month but I made a decision that I was going to trust God and I gave all 20 pounds in a donation to the to the event and the Christian event I was at and as soon as I put that 20 pounds into the donation box I felt God speaking to me and the Bible says that God speaks in, a, in many ways, but uh, in a still small voice. And I often feel that God speaks to me in a, a still small voice, like a whisper. And that whisper said, uh, send out your, your CV, your, your resume to, to 10 companies. And by the end of the summer, you'll have a new job that will take care of all your financial needs. So I did. I randomly sent out my CV, my resume to 10 house building companies. And 
by the end of the summer, I had a new job, which uh, doubled my salary and provided me with a company car for the first time. Um, so I actually sold my car uh, and uh, um, paid off my garage bills. But that taught me a big lesson that God is interested in every aspect of my life and that I can trust him with my finances. Uh, and I'll come back to that, that later. Uh, I progressed in my, my house building career, uh, working in house building, until I eventually started my own house building company. And it was a tremendous success. Within two years, uh, the company had a, a turnover of three million pounds and uh, we were uh, building some very luxurious houses and we won awards for, for good quality at the Scottish Home Awards, which is like the Oscars for house building in, in Scotland. And in fact, um, in my last year of building houses, I won the award for building the best house in Scotland. And that was in 2008. So that was 14 years ago. But also in 2008, there was an economic recession, um, worldwide economic recession. And whenever the economy goes into recess, the first area of the economy that's, that's badly affected is always house, house building and house prices. And I was committed to a building project that I'd, I'd already put um, almost two million pounds into uh, with the hope that when I finished building the houses, um, they would be worth 20% or 30% more than the money I was putting into them. I'd invested all my money, every penny I had into this because my company was a great success and was making good money. Um, but when the recession hit, the, the value of the houses that I was building, well, they lost a, about a third of their value almost overnight, very, very quickly. And suddenly my project was uh, looking at making some serious losses. It wasn't my fault. I hadn't done a thing wrong. The project that I was on was the project that I built the, the best house in Scotland on. So we were building great houses. Uh, people enjoyed working for me. Um, they told me it didn't feel like a job. It, it was more than that. Um, it felt like they were with family. We had a great time working together with the um, 30 odd men that um, worked for me. But when the, the economy turned, um, I actually lost everything. I lost my company. I had to pay money back to the bank. And uh, I borrowed um, £2 million pounds from the bank. And uh, it took a long time to sell the houses. And they sold for a, a big loss. It wasn't my fault. The, uh, the economy was in a bad place. But it hit me financially so much so that I lost every 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 bit of money that I had, all my life savings. Uh, I lost my company. Uh, I lost my job. Um, it felt like I lost my future. It felt like I lost my identity. Um, it was a real bad time in life. Uh, I, I don't know what it's like for the people in Ukraine who feel like they're losing everything. I don't know what it's like to live in a a country that's that's being ravaged by war. But I, I do know what it's like to lose everything that I own. And I do know what it's like to feel that you have no future. That's what I felt like. I'd worked almost 20 years in house building and I'd got to the top of my profession, building the best houses in the country. And then I lost it all. Where do you go from there? How do you move forward in life when you have such a big setback, when you feel like you've lost your identity? It hit me really badly, but I, I came to the conclusion. There's three things I could do here. One is I could give up. I could just say life has dealt me a really bad blow, a horrible blow, and I've lost everything. I may as well give up. That's one option. The second option is maybe I need to just trust myself to fix this. Uh, the smart idea would 
be for me to go and find a job in construction. I had a great reputation before I started my house building company. I used to um, uh, manage uh, departments and, and companies and uh, maybe I could get a job working for a big company again and slowly build my finances back up. But the option number three, which was available to me as a Christian, was do I trust God to fix things? That I can work with God to fix this? And I was praying that through. It was such a crossroads in my life. And as I was praying that through, probably the biggest miracles in my life happened. Uh, I bumped into uh, someone who I'd never met before, a woman from Australia. We were chatting and she said, uh, you're a Christian, aren't you? I said, yeah, I am. And she said, I have a message for you from God. Uh, now, if you're not a Christian, that sounds like probably one of the weirdest things you can hear. Um, a strange thing that someone says that God's speaking to them and they have a message for you. Um, but I, I was all ears and uh, I wanted to hear what it was. And this woman said that... Um, the word from God is that um, the reason that I was created, the reason that I was made was to help people to fulfill their full God-given potential. And that God was about to gift me and enable me to remove barriers from people's minds so that they could fulfill their full God-given potential. And people from all around the world would seek me out um, uh, for this gift. I thought when she said that, that was so grand, so big an idea. I thought, I'm, I don't, I'm not sure that you're hearing from God on this. That sounds crazy as a word that came into my mind. Um, so I left it at that. Um, and then the woman said in the conversation, actually, God's speaking to me again and telling me that um, you're about to be asked to go to America. Uh, and you'll think of three reasons why you can't go, but you must go because this is where God is going to give you this gift. Um, I thought, this is just crazy. Um, I'm not sure about this. Um, a few weeks later, uh, I was at a prayer meeting in the north of England. And uh, the, the man who was leading the prayer meeting, I'd never met him before. I hadn't told anybody about this woman from Australia. But this man was from the country of Jamaica. And he was a leader of a church in Jamaica. And as he finished leading the meeting, he walked straight up to me and sat down and said, as I was leading the meeting, I believe God was speaking to me about you. And uh, God was telling me that the reason you were created, the reason you were made was to help people fulfill their full God-given potential. And God is about to gift you with the ability to remove barriers from people's minds to help them to fulfill their full God-given potential. And people from all around the world will seek you out. And I thought, that's incredible. That's exactly the same thing that this woman from Australia said to me. Um, and uh, the next day, uh, I had a phone call from someone in America um, from a Christian charity that I'm involved with. And uh, he invited me to come and speak at their the, their national conference in America in the city of Atlanta. And on the conversation, I immediately said to him, I, I gave him three reasons why I couldn't go. Uh, I said, uh, I can't go. It's my wedding anniversary. I can't go. I'm trying to save my business. I can't go. I don't have any money. And after the phone call, um, it came back to my mind that uh, this woman from Australia said, you're about to be invited to go to America. I'd never been to America before. And you'll think of three reasons why you can't go, but you must go because that's where God is going to give you this gift. I spoke to my wife about it and she said that, um, I said, well, I've got no money to go. Uh, my, wife, my wife said, you, you need to trust God right now. If God is speaking to you, you need to take a step of faith. And so I used a credit card for the first time in my life to book the flights to go to America to this conference. And when I arrived, uh, the man who had spoke to me on the phone to invite me to the conference said, I must apologize. I forgot to tell you that um, yeah, I've paid, I, I will pay you for your flights 
and your hotel. So that was uh, step of faith number one, that um, God honoured that step of faith. And during the meeting, again, I hadn't told anyone about this woman from Australia or the man from Jamaica, but uh, at the meeting, at the conference, at the main event, the, the man who was speaking at the main event, who was the leader of a church in Las Vegas, he actually stopped during his talk and said, God is speaking to me right now about this man over here. And he pointed to me and he said the same thing that the woman from Australia and from the man from Jamaica had said, God's telling me that the reason you were created, the reason you were made was to help people to fulfill their full God-given potential. And God's about to gift you with the ability to remove barriers from people's minds and people from all around the world will seek you out for this and you will remove those barriers and they will fulfill their full your God-given potential. And he asked everyone in the room to pray for me and said, God's about to give them this gift right now. And as they prayed, I could feel a power. I could feel the power of the Holy Spirit over me. It was a tangible power. You could feel it. It felt incredible, wonderful, amazing. And after that, I went home and uh, I made a decision to um, go into psychology. I'd studied a little bit of psychology. I didn't have full formal qualifications in psychology. Um, I had no money, but I took a step of faith. Instead of going back into construction to try and earn um, money back, uh, I made a step of faith to go into a new career. And, uh, and straight away, I, I prayed, Lord, if this is from you, you need to help me. I don't know how to start this career. I don't know how to, how, how to formalize my qualifications. I need to learn all these things. Uh, and as I started to, to look into these things, straight away, people came to me to ask me for help. There was a man that I knew in construction who said, Stephen, you've, you've turned your life around from something that was really difficult. I am struggling um, with depression. Um, I'm about to lose my business, but you've recovered from that. How did you do it? And I said to him, well, two things. Um, I, um, I prayed and uh, he said, I'm, I'm not really interested in that. And then I said, secondly, I, I got my old psychology books out and I looked at some techniques and I used them and I felt so much better, so more, much more positive. He said, would, would you teach me those techniques? So I did. I met with him. And after a few sessions, he said, the weight of the world is off my shoulder. I feel so much better. And he started to tell everyone. And then I had phone calls from people who said, um, this guy, Frank, um, told me that you'd helped him. W would you help me like you helped Frank? I'll pay you to do this. And so I, I started to earn some money from this. I formalized my qualifications. I did more studies. Uh, I became um, a sports psychologist. And uh, I started to work um, with uh, football players. And I helped some football players become international football players. I helped um, a Scottish Premier League team to win a national trophy, uh, the League Cup, um, beating, beating some of the biggest clubs in, in Scotland who had... Um, a playing budget 40 times bigger than them. Uh, great things happened. And remarkably, just as God has said, people from all around the world started to seek me out for me to work with them in psychology. So 14 years later, um, 14 years later, I've never advertised the work that I do. I have my own psychology practice. And uh, remarkably, uh, I've worked with over 4,000 people from all around the world. That was a complete step of faith. It sounded crazy, these words that I heard, um, people saying God speaking to them. But the fruit is there for all to see. Remarkable things have happened. I specialize now in helping people out of uh, depression and anxiety uh, to overcome their fears to overcome these barriers that are holding them back in life. I could share hundreds of stories of how God has transformed 
uh, the lives of the people I work with. I pray for everyone that I work with. I don't pray with them, but I pray and ask God to help me. God, you've created these people. You know everything about them. Will you help me? Will you work through me to heal them, to, to have them fulfill their full potential in life? And he has. So many people have been healed. Uh, it has been an incredible journey. I have to pinch myself very often when I see people come to me who are very broken, terrible things have happened to them in life. And yet, by the time that I've finished working with them, I've seen God do amazing things and turn them in from, from the most um, unhappy people and depressed people into people that are full of confidence who are achieving new things and doing better in life than they've ever done. Um, I've helped businesses to, to uh, become more profitable and to grow. I've helped many sports people to achieve career bests. And I've helped many people to uh, move on from depression and anxiety to um, achieve promotions at work or to find their soulmate and get married uh, and become parents. Um, many, many things. So how can I say that God has done that? Well, let me give you an example. Um, one, one time I, I, I went to see a new client. I always go to visit clients in their, their home. And uh, I'd arrived early uh, to this client. So I, I'd stopped um, just one street away and sat in my car and prayed, Heavenly Father, you know this person. You know exactly what the problem is. Father, will you help me to heal them? Will you work through me? Um, will you give me revelation to tell me what it is that's wrong and what needs to be fixed? As I prayed that prayer, uh, all these words came into my head. I say that because that's what it feels like when God speaks to me. I don't hear an audible voice, but a whole lot of words came into my head. How do I know they were from God? Well, let me tell you the story. When I went to visit the man, um, he had never told me what his problem was when he invited me to come and meet with him. I'd only been, he'd asked around and, and heard uh, uh, um, that I'd helped some other people. So he uh, reached out to me. And when I started to speak with him, um, he couldn't, he didn't want to tell me what the problem was. He was so embarrassed. And after 20 minutes of him speaking, but not telling me anything, he said, I don't want to say it. I don't want to say the words. I'm so embarrassed. I don't know where we go from here. How do we move forward? I said, well, I, I believe I know what your problem is. He said, how could you know? I haven't told you. In fact, I haven't told anyone. No one knows what my problem is. I said, well, I, I prayed in my car, and I believe God's told me what the problem is. And he laughed. And he said, well, this, that's impossible. Um, I don't believe in God and uh, nobody knows what my problem is. So um, humor me. Tell me what it is. What is it this, this invisible God has told you? And I told him exactly what the problem was, that, that he worked in emergency services and he went to a, a road traffic accident. And as he was trying to get someone out of the car who was trapped in the car, he misused a piece of equipment, the equipment broke and the man he was rescuing died and he struggled to cope with it and he was now self-medicating by drinking alcohol and it had got so much of a problem that um, he had driven his car with his children in it whilst he was drunk, whilst he was um, full of alcohol and that's why he had reached out to me. and. Uh, the man started to cry, tears rolling down his face. And I said, that, that's impossible. That, that's exactly what happened, but I haven't told anyone. No one knows, not even my wife knows. No one knows this has happened. How is this possible? I said, because for man, it's impossible, but for God, all things are possible. And I'm pleased to say that um, I worked with that man and he not only was he um, healed of his condition, but he also 
came to realize the truth and the reality of the living God. God spoke to him that night. And not only is he a Christian now, but he's a, a worship leader. You see, God is alive. No matter what the world tells you, the reality, the truth is, my experience in life is, the truth is that God is alive. And God is able to do more than we can ask or think. That's what his word, uh, the Bible tells us, that God is able to do more than we can ask or think. God has done more in my life than I thought was possible. The, the, there is real value in my life, more value than I hoped there would be because 4,000 people have been healed and fulfilled their potential in life. God did that, not me, but he did it through me, and it's incredible. God has restored my finances that were destroyed by the recession in 2008. He's restored those finances, and he's met my every need. I am so grateful for everything that God has done for me and through me, and most importantly, I am so grateful that he has made it possible for me to be part of his family, for me to be adopted into his family. I came to faith when I was 15, when I accepted Jesus, when I prayed and, and said that I was sorry for all the, the things that I had done wrong in my life and that I was giving my life to God. I was able to do that because God had made it possible. He had sent his son to live a perfect life, the Bible tells us. Jesus lived a miraculous life, a perfect life, and he willingly paid the price for all the things that we've done wrong. When, when someone does something wrong, there deserves to be a punishment. And for us, if we live our lives for ourselves, we deserve what's coming to us through those choices. And the Bible tells us that if we continue to live our lives for ourselves and are for ourselves only, apart from God, then we will be eternally separated from God. But the good news, the good news is that God wants us to be with him for all eternity, starting now. Eternal life starts now if we accept Jesus and the sacrifice that he made for us to take the punishment for all the things that we've done wrong. I made that decision and asked Jesus um, into my life when I was 15 and my life has become extraordinary since then. I commend Jesus to you. I commend the living God to you. And I would ask today, right now, if you do not know Jesus, if you have not made that decision to live your life with God, then you're missing out. And I ask you, I appeal to you, make a decision right now that you're going to live life with God. And you can do that by saying a simple prayer. So maybe you could pray this prayer with me and pray it from your heart. Mean it in all sincerity and all honesty. Let's pray this prayer together so you can start a new life, start a new uh, future, a better future with God. Let's pray. Say these words after me. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you sent your son, Jesus, into this world. I thank you that he lived a perfect life. And I thank you that he was willing to lay down his life for me. I thank you that he paid the price for all my wrong. I ask for your forgiveness for all the sin in my life, for all the things that I've done wrong. I thank you that Jesus 
has paid the price with his own blood for me. I accept that sacrifice and I ask that you would accept me now into your family forever. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer, I would encourage you to reach out to us, to, to reach out to us um, through social media, through the phone number that you'll see uh, I hand back to, to Alan and uh, contact us, let us know so we can encourage you in your new journey in life with Jesus. Thank you for listening. God bless you. Thank you, Stephen, so much. That was a wonderful, wonderful story. Inspiring, encouraging. I'm sure many, many people will be touched by what you said tonight. If you prayed that prayer with Stephen, and like Stephen says, please contact us. You see the number on the screen, plus four four seven nine four three five five zero two eight seven. 877 Or you can go to our website, lifestoriesworldwide.com. There you will find the Salvation Prayer link. You'll find information that will help you. You can also find out about the Monday evenings, uh, live stories that go out every week. You can listen to other stories like Stephen. But the most wonderful thing is if you have prayed that prayer tonight, your life will never be the same again. So we do thank you for joining us tonight. And thank you, Stephen, so much. Thank you, Gents, for interpreting. Thank you, John. And pray God will bless you all. May you know the peace of God, which passes all human understanding. God bless you all. Bye.